What is going on, everybody? Brent Abel here, goldballhunting.com. Over there in the spotlight, the Telly Savalas look this morning. That's right. <laughs> the great Jeff Jacklich. And we've got a special episode, number 342 of the Goldball Hunting Podcast for you guys today. Something new we're kind of experimenting with. See, we're going to kind of re- uh, take your pulse and see what you guys think about this. But what we've got is, uh, is an edited match from uh, the recent Crable. Uh, Masters, the 2019 Crable Masters played on the grass uh, here at the Mission Hills Country Club, $25,000 prize money tournament for the top uh, 60 players in the United States, end of the year, kind of a treat for those guys um, for um, getting to either the finals or the sa- or, 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 or winning. Um, <clears throat> and, right. yeah, and you, you and I have talked about, you know, the format um, in, in several episodes before Jeff, I mean, where it's, 12 guys get invited, two groups of six, two round robin groups of six. They got to play each other Monday through Friday, right? If you're in a group of six, there's five matches. And you're talking about this is like a semi or a final of a category one for five days in a row. (laughs) Right, every round. Just to see if you qualify for the semis. The semifinals nice. on Saturday, and then maybe the finals on Sunday. So it's 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 brutality. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and uh, but anyway, so we got a great match for you guys today. And there's there's two things. Number one, um, <clears throat> this is a match between Maurice Hunter and Mike Tammons, and uh, <clears throat> the match has been edited uh, has been edited in terms of the between points or yeah the between points time is cut out along with the the side change times. But the other thing is really cool is there's a link down below in the description area or wherever you are, maybe over on Facebook that will take you to the stats and the stats are just prolific and remarkable. And, you know, you and I have not yet gone through the stats to be able to sort of, right. you know, advise or recommend, Hey guys, out of the four pages of stats, check out this one because this may be something that you ought to be thinking about. Right. Uh, so anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoy this, um, and we do want your feedback when it's done. I think the video is, I can't remember, maybe 30 minutes, something like that. Right. But it's, it's a long match. I mean, it's uh, uh, Maurice Hunter wins 6-7, 6-4, 11-9 in the super tiebreaker wow. for the third set. And they, play, and they had to play a super tiebreaker uh, for the third because it was getting near the end of the day, and of course we get <clears throat> dicey. Um, but anyway, it was, uh, just spectacular yeah. tennis. One of the things you and I were talking about before we hit the record button was, um, and it's kind of like what we see on the tennis channel. Sometimes you go, well, God, these guys make it look pretty darn easy. Yeah. I mean, couldn't I hit that Rafa forehand or couldn't I right. this or that? And, and yeah. well, the answer is well, like, they don't, no, they, they don't hit the ball that hard. Yeah. Really? That's they look right. like they're barely moving. And, and and they're always set up over there. I mean, so yeah. Well, I guess the point here is you're going to watch these two guys who are two of the top players in the world in their age yeah. group, not only in the United States, but in their age group. And um, it's going to look like these guys make this thing look pretty darn easy. And and that's kind of the whole gold ball hunting premise yeah. is that these are the guys that you want to model and copy. Yeah. Whatever they do, if you're in the 60 age group or if you're in the 55s, moving up to 60s, or, you know. Yeah, I mean, Mike, Mike, Mike won everything in the 55s. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know how many gold balls and silvers he has, but, he, you know, he won, he won well, everything. At the, at the Avery Cup in the, in the program uh, at the Berkeley Tennis Club, it said Mike had, had 40 – gold and singles and no 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 he had 20 gold and singles and 20 gold and doubles and i thought oh man this guy obviously is an all-court player right and so i go up to him a couple of days later i said hey man you know what's with the 20 and 20 he goes well they asked me what the number and frankly i don't remember <laughs> <laughs> so i just divvy and it he up. says you know it's more than 20 in singles and it's more than 20 in doubles but i've you know and he, and, and, and he even said, he said, at some point, he just stopped really counting. <laughs> Whereas the rest of us are going, I'm, I'm counting. hunting for my first, man. I'm counting the wood balls. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> so um, anyway, guys, 
Uh, Jeff, anything you want to add before we tee up this match? Well, I think I think the thing to note is um, the the consistency of stroke production, um, the the just that that's probably like one of the big things the consistency of stroke stroke production that that it's not there, there's nothing I, I don't know I can't think of another term but there's nothing glamorous about the way these guys hit the ball. That's right. It's exactly you know? right. And so so it can be quite deceiving. You know, it's very deceiving to think, you know, like, well, you know, I, I'm a good four or five and I got a, I got a wicked lag snap and wipe. Good luck with that. Yeah. Well, why don't you, watch you, why don't you enter a national category one in the sixties and see how that holds up and, see and how look, it holds up. Yeah, yeah. And, and look, I mean, what, what you're going to see with both these guys is you're not going to see the big buggy whip. And in fact, with Mike Tammons, he's got I mean, he's got a pure continental forehand grip, and yeah, he can he can come over it a little bit. But I, I talked to him about it, you know, and he just says, "But I don't need to. Why would I do that? It just it takes more energy. And for one, all right, you might think, well, that's not a lot of energy, but yeah, but you start to add up all the forehands you hit in the match, right? You know, as you're going, man, that that elbow is a little ouchy, <laughs> right?" <laughs> Uh, well, I think I think speaking to what he said though is just is that it's a boatload of energy that you're dumping into one hit, and it 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 just you know it just does, risk, it risk reward payoff to energy input in the payoff, and you really you know as you as you, again we're talking about senior tennis as you age up you really got to consider what's the fuel burn rate over the long haul of the match. That's right. You, you, you got to be aware of it. You know, you right. got to be aware of, of what the burn rate is. And, you know, I mean, well, like, can, you know, yesterday I kind of went off on the rant about, uh, you know, if you're carrying around an extra 15 or 20 uh, and you, and you tell me that you want to win more matches, especially those long close matches. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Let's talk reality. And that's what we did yesterday. One thing you're going to see with these two guys Guys are just fit, man. They're just fit. Yeah. And they're not they're not hauling around, you know, extra freight because it wouldn't make any sense that right. if you're gonna play at this level, um, or if you're gonna work your way up to something close to this level, that um that you wouldn't I think, I think another thing, just uh, maximize yeah. it, just 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 maximize your fitness. Doesn't mean you have to be the fittest guy in the world, but don't be the unfittest guy out there. Right. And, right. and look, I, think, I mean, in a match like you're going to see, guys, um, fitness can be the deciding factor. Right. I mean. Who's got just a little more juice in the tank in the third set? And, and, um, I'm, can, and I'm not saying that's what happened in this match, but I'm just saying, right. just saying um, that, that can be. That can that can definitely be right. Be a I think I mean one other thing I want I'd like like the the uh, you know uh, gold ballers to watch is hard to tell when you're watching Mike Tamman um, whether he's winning or losing. He he's so stoic as he moves through the match. Um, that's right. And it's so it's a really it's a great it's a great takeaway for something to pay attention to um, it, over the course of the of the match itself. It's just you can't tell. Right. You know, right. there's Good. no big come on or, you know, any, you know, it's just, <laughs> you just, you know. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, we'll shut up and let you guys get to the match. Um, again, really want to hear what you think. And if you want us to do more of these, uh, we certainly can. But we got to hear from you. If you love it, great. If you don't, if it's a waste, if you don't want it, then we're not going to do any more of these. But you got to let us know. Um, and the best way to do that is right down below in the, in the comments area. Just, just let us know what's on your mind. What do you want to see? Do you want to see us? Maybe Jeff, you and I can do a little, you know, a little post match kind of, uh, analysis yeah. of kind of what you and I saw, what you and I think. But, uh, anyway, guys, so we want to hear from you. And, and if you don't want to leave a comment, just shoot us an email. Let us know at goldballhunting.com. Guys. Enjoy, and uh, I look forward to hearing or reading your response.
Thank <laughs> you. 